Here we are at Philadelphia Episcopal Cathedral with the white leg molar that used to be in Schwab Auditorium at Penn State University, in the middle of the state. I'll illustrate for you a few flutes from that white leg molar right now. Here we have the concert flute. Paired with it, the flute d'amour. Together, the clarabelle flute on the grate is a wonderful contrast to that. Then the roar flute on the swell. Compared with the Lieblich Gedeckt in the swell. Together. lovely harmonic flute at four foot pitch on the grate. In the swell, by contrast, the triangular flute had four foot pitch. In the nave division, we have one of the original ranks from the 1906 Austin organ here, the melodia from the choir division in that organ. Paired with it, the bois celeste. Of course, the flute stops on an organ continue on down through the 32-foot pitch, which won't be audible on this recording, but those pipes are essentially longer because they're stopped longer than 16 feet, probably 17, 18 or so, 19 feet long at, at the longest, down in the bass range. So we also have a lovely double flute, which came from the previous organ here uh, that was brought to us, I believe, from the Roosevelt Organ Company. Doppel flute because it has two mouths, one on each side. The triangular flute because it is literally three sides instead of four like the normal wooden construction. So some variety in the construction of those flutes. Then we shift off to the string sounds. Very nice, keen solitional in the swell. Paired with its voix celeste. The broader choir viola and its viol celeste.
Angelic at Gemshorn on the Great. Extending down to 16 in pitch. Where low C is actually 16 feet long. Then we have the very delicate Dulciana in the choir division, paired with its Undamaris. The viol from the original Austin Swell Division. And the Celeste. Combining all of the Celestes together, we have a lovely, rich sound. Then we have, by contrast, the diapason sounds. And here's the second diapason on the grate. Extending to 16. Geigen principle on the swell. With its principle four, also played now at eight foot pitch. Here's the first diapason on the grate. The larger four foot octave up in the nave grate. The very grand open diapason in the nave grate. principles and diapasons, and we have a very rich eight-foot foundation sound here. The oboe is a nice addition to that in the French tradition. Oboe by itself
a different kind of oboe called flugelhorn found in the nave division. By contrast, the fagato Now, the principal choruses, if we build them up eight, four, and two in pitch, will sound something like this. That's all without the major reed stops, the trumpet stops on the organ. Here we are with the tromba on the great. The trumpet on the swell, the original white leg, large reed in the 1936 organ. By the way, the tromba was also a white leg rank coming from another organ. previously uh, illustrated tromba on the great and the tuba saved from the previous organ the Austin of 1906 is the double trumpet now in the swell originally it was enclosed on the great there and it offers a full addition now to the swell trumpet. swell sound on this organ has a, a variety of approaches. Here, here we are with a lesser full swell. contrast between the full organ from 1936 and with the few stops that we added to the main organ.
notes of the tuba brought in at the end. The contrast in sound between the full organ in front uh, and full organ in, in the rear is, is simply this. Here's the, here is the full organ with everything up front. Slightly pull the volume down a little bit. By contrast, here is the full organ from the back. Called the nave divisions. All right, there you have some, some uh, thoughts. I haven't illustrated a couple of uh, beautiful contrasting stops here. I'll give you, give you a little bit more. We have, on the Baroque side of things, we have a Crumhorn from the 1985 rebuild of the Austin. Here, by contrast, is the 1936 clarinet. We have se several things on this organ that didn't appear in the previous organs here or uh, in many other organs uh, close by as well. We have a five and a third choir de great coupler, which provides quite a bit of grit and, and uh, if you will, it, it emphasizes the lower harmonics, uh, the 16 foot octave below harmonics, if you, if you add it with, with the great. By contrast, the uh, choir to great two and two thirds coupler gives you an opportunity to use upper work. for some very strange combinations. The Del Siena stop in the choir division is unified to play at eight, four, and two and two thirds, and two. Adding the four foot coupler. Adding the two and two thirds foot coupler. can also do something which creates a very different effect by doing this.
sort of star-like in the distance. So now this organ only has two mixtures on it. The one in the, uh, in the grate fills out the ensemble. in the swell is more like what we're used to hearing in the uh, usual sort of furniture sound on organs, usually found on the grate. But in this case, it really gives you punch added to the reeds in the, in the swell. Here's the uh, chorus minus the mixture. And with the mixture. with a double trumpet. <laughs> Wonderful contrasts throughout this organ. There you have a good variety of its sounds. And we have yet more. The white leg molar pipe work in the nave division has uh, some flutes with a two and two thirds. Then added on is a solo stop, uh, the, the, we call a cornet, when you combine eight, four, and two and two thirds, and one and three fifths, and two. We have an additional cornet stop found as the bottom octave of the 32-foot trombone. We don't have real full-length 32-foot trombone pipes, so here it is illustrated by itself from the trombone down. And you scratch your head and wonder, how can that be? But those are the actual overtone series found as a 32-foot reed, found in the 32-foot reed minus the fundamentals. So if we combine a bunch of other stops, adding the illusion of a full sound, gives the effect of a full 32-foot reed by just having that series of overtones. In this case, three ranks of pipes per key for just that bottom octave. We also have some fun things. The Zimbelstern. the harp stop those are metal mallets struck by a hammer we also have chimes standard organ chimes and we have an ability uh, not yet engaged to play the bells in the tower. So 
lots of percussion. If I were to use this harp in a uh, sort of restrained way, uh, you'll see how effective it can be. it. All kinds of possibilities here. Thank you for listening.